Welcome to the house of the Lord today. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Winter's holding on for dear life. It, it waited to start till the end, but that's okay. It's warm in here. Praise God. Glory. And uh, it's about to get even warmer. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You'll you exercise and uh, w- worship the Lord and we'll, we'll get all warm. And then after that, when you listen to me preach, it cools off. Praise God. <laughs> Don't forget, uh, just one announcement today, For uh, don't forget that March 12th will be the annual business meeting, and if you're a member, we, I would invite you and actually encourage you to please stay so that we have a quorum. We, don't, uh, we conduct the business efficiently, quickly, and uh, not quickly in the sense where we, we don't think it's, uh, in, uh, it's not important, but we do it so that we don't waste time, so um, if it usually is within an hour after the service. So if we could have any members, please stay on that day. If we will uh, get our business conducted, and uh, I'll, we'll uh, have that, d- that day. And that's the only announcement I have, except I hope you came expecting to receive from the, the Lord today. I know that uh, he has a powerful message for us to hear and, uh, and for those that might be watching or listening to this later, I, I know that God wants to speak to his believers, and he has been doing so. I'm excited about how God has uh, confirmed what he wants us to hear. And you know, we, we don't know how many people are, we get an idea of how many people might see the, uh, when we post our services there. But I can tell you that they're doing uh, sound bites on Facebook of, uh, of just like a minute or two of, of messages, part of the sermons. And those are getting like several hundred views. And so that's getting out there. Praise God. It's, uh, it's not the whole message, but it is part of the message. It's part of the word. So we're getting it out there. And I know that God has a purpose and he's fulfilling it. And we're part of his vessels to fulfill that. So let's get excited about what he's going to do today. And let's get ready to worship him. Lord, I thank you today that we can praise you, that we can worship you. And Lord, we have the freedom to come into your house. Lord, will you meet with us where you'll come and you'll just minister by your Holy Spirit? Lord, you're so faithful. You're faithful in all your ways. And Lord, in spite of our humanity, in spite of our imperfections, Lord, we come before you humbly. We come before your throne of grace. And we ask today, Lord, that as we worship you, as we praise you, as we open our hearts and our minds, that you would pour down your Holy Spirit in this place. Lord, that you would touch lives, that you would change lives. Lord, for those that might listen or watch this, Lord, let them be in uh, in those here in attendance. And even those that are unable to be here, Lord, I pray that you would minister to them by your Holy Spirit. I pray today, Lord, would change, be a change day, a new day for someone, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you would minister in a powerful way that would change lives, Lord, and turn lives around, Lord, for a new beginning. Today is the day the Lord has made, and we'll rejoice and be glad in it. And we just thank you for it in Jesus' name. And everybody said... Let's worship the Lord together. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We praise you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah.
glorify your name. We praise you, Lord. We worship your name, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We worship your name. Be blessed by our worship and praise, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to your name, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We worship your name, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We worship your name. We praise you, Lord. Lord, I thank you today for your presence here. I sense your Holy Spirit in a precious way. We feel the warmth of your embrace, Lord. Be blessed, Lord, by our praise and our worship today. For we have entered your gates with thanksgiving and your courts with praise. Lord, as we've opened our hearts and we've lifted up our voices, we've clapped our hands, we've praised you and raised our hands and praise and adoration to you. Lord, you once again are faithful to come into your house. And meet with us and come to us, Lord, who all who are heavy laden. To encourage us, to give us rest. Oh, the glory of your presence. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, oh, the glory of your presence. Oh, the glory of your touch in our lives. Oh, the glory of your hand upon us to guide and protect us. So lead us not into temptation, but to deliver us from all evil. Lord, I thank you today and praise you. We humbly, Lord, with expectation, come before your throne of grace. Lord, with an expectation, knowing, Lord, that you are our God and you are the rewarder of those who diligently seek you. You're all glorious. You're all glorious, Lord. Lord, I pray for every sickness, every infirmity. Lord, I pray right now in Jesus' name. The power of your healing. Lord, would make testimonies of your people as we just say. Lord, I pray right now in Jesus' name for miracles. Lord, in bodies. Lord, for physical touches. 
Lord, in minds, Lord, those that are troubled and vexed, Lord. Lord, as you have said that we are not to fear but to trust in you, I pray, Lord Jesus, that, Lord, you would guide and guard our minds. Lord, that you would give us your strength and your power in our lives. Lord, I pray, Lord, for every need that is presented in this body, Lord, even those that might not be here, those that might watch this, those that might listen to this later, Lord. I pray, Lord, as they do, Lord, as we lift them up, as we present them before you, you know the needs of your people, Lord, better than we know our own needs. You know the cry of the heart, Lord. You know the cries in our minds, Lord. You know us in our most secret place. I pray today, Lord, Lord, that you would do a work, a mighty work in lives. Lift up those that are down. Encourage them, Lord. Lord, those that have fallen, Lord, pick them up with your hand. Let the joy of the Lord be our strength. Lord, somebody's looking for direction today. I pray your guiding light would shine so bright. There would be no question in the direction and the way to go. Lord, I pray for a sovereign move of your Holy Spirit. Lord, that would revive and change lives all over this community, all over this valley, all over this state, all over this country, and all over the world. We know it's the last days, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you would pour out your spirit upon all, Lord, who would seek you, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that the, the fire of revival would be ignited in your people, Lord. Lord, to be sincere in seeking you and diligently seeking you. Lord, I pray today, as I know you're here in this place, I pray your power and the essence of your spirit would just rest upon each and every person. Bring peace, Lord, to the storm. And calm to the anxious. Lord, give your bright light to the depressed. There is none like you, Lord. No one can do as you can do. And we, your temple, we give you reverence. So
thank you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We ask all this in your precious and holy name. And everyone in the house said, Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If our ushers would come forward as we continue to worship the Lord in our giving, hallelujah. Glory to you. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you today for your presence here. I thank you today, Lord, for your provisions, for your blessings. Lord, I pray as we're about to give to, back to you and return a portion of what you've given us. Lord, that you would bless your people as they give. Bless them, press down, shaking together and running over. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Worship to you. We have another video for you today. Praise the Lord. Last week, the Lord began to speak with me about the message for today. And, and I'll be honest with you, he gave me so many different thoughts and, and put so many things out that I was, I was like, Lord, I, I don't even know how you want me to organize and put this all together. And as I began to put things together, he, he, he started to put it together. And then change, and, and I was completely like, okay, this is next week. Copy and paste this into a new document. And uh, let's go back to where you want me for today and we'll restart over again. And today, what I want to talk about, I want to continue. It's kind of a series, Walking According to God's Word, with a subtitle, It's About an Encounter with Him. And I want to talk about having an encounter with the Lord. A few weeks ago... I, talk, I, said, I mentioned that. Maybe it was last week or a few weeks ago. If your memory's better than mine, you might know when it was. I suppose I could have, maybe it's, it might not be in my notes, so I might not be able to look there for it. But I mentioned that really what makes it real is when we have an encounter with Christ. And I want to talk about that today. And I want to go to Acts chapter 9. And talk about a guy named Saul who turned into Paul. And talk about his encounter. I want you to, and maybe those that are listening or watching this today, I really believe God is reaching out to his people in the last days. And he's trying to get us to to focus, laser focus on him. And let the Holy Spirit speak to us today. Verse 1, meanwhile Saul was uttering threats with every breath and was eager to kill the fo Lord's followers. So he went to the high priest, he requested letters addressed to the synagogues in Damascus asking for their cooperation in the arrest of any followers of the way he found there. He wanted to bring them, both men and women, back to Jerusalem in chains. As he was approaching Damascus on this mission, a light from heaven suddenly shone down around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked, and the voice replied, I am Jesus, the one you are persecuting. Now get up and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. The men with Saul stood speechless, for they heard the sound of someone's voice, but saw no one. Saul picked himself up off the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he was blind. So his companions led him by the hand to Damascus. He remained there blind for three days and did not eat or drink. Lord, I thank you today for your word. Lord, I pray as I deliver this that it would be your words and not mine. I pray, Lord, that you would anoint me as I bring forth this powerful message. And Lord, I pray that we would receive all that you have for us today. 
And Lord, I pray that you would hide me behind the cross as I deliver it. And I pray it in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. Last week in Psalm chapter 119 in verse 101, we talked about that David had said, I have refrained my feet from every evil way that I might keep thy word. And in one uh, chapter, or yes, uh, verse 105, he said that his word, that the word is a lamp unto his feet and a light unto his path, the word of God. And throughout the Psalms, David emphasized knowing, memorizing this Psalm, I mean in Psalm 119, memorizing and following God's word, wanting to refrain from the things that are displeasing to the Lord. David tells us in verse 105 that God's word is his guiding light that lights his path and dispels the darkness in his life. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, the faith chapter, verse 6 tells us that it's impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who diligently or sincerely seek him. We must believe first that he exists. McLaren in his exposition, he says it this way, he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. The best reward of seeking is finding the thing that you are looking for. Isn't that profound? The best reward when you lost something, or when you're looking for something, is to find what you're looking for, isn't it? So the best reward that God, the rewarder, gives is when he gives himself. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And you might recall, and I already said this, that I briefly mentioned how in order for all of this to be real for people, then we must, they must, or whoever must have an encounter with Christ. In order for this to be real, in order for us to believe that he exists and that he diligent, or that when we seek after him, that he rewards. And what does the reward mean? It means we find him. It doesn't mean when we diligently seek him, he gives us everything we want. It means when we seek him diligently, he, we will find him. And he will give us himself. In order for it to be real, we have, an, we have to have an encounter with Christ whereby he manifests his presence through the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit reveals the love of Christ that surpasses human understanding. That's really what it is. His presence in our lives. His presence in this place. His love so precious and so strong. When he steps into the room, you can just sense his presence. It's, it's, it's his love in the presence of his love that is surpassing our human understanding. So let's talk about, the first thing we need to talk about is the encounter that Saul has. It's one of the great testimonies of a life-changing encounter with Christ. Nothing about the gospel of Jesus was real or meant anything but blasphemy to Saul. He was taught by one of the leading authorities of the day, Gamaliel. He knew the, the old law and the things, everything they needed to do and to follow. And he was one of the best at going out there and looking and finding and persecuting. And here in the scripture, he's getting permission from the priests to go out and to seek out people that are followers of this Jesus and to bring them in and to arrest them for persecute, to bring them to be persecuted. And he thinks he's doing God's will. He thinks that he's following what the Lord would call him to do. He thought that all of the religious acts and the, the persecuting of the followers of Christ was pleasing to the Lord. And he was doing the work of God, so he thought. 
Interesting, verse 3 fits in with what we talked about the past couple weeks. And as he was approaching Damascus on this mission, what? A light from heaven suddenly shone down around him. Who's that light? Jesus. Saul didn't know it, but he, he was in darkness and Christ was about to light his path. He didn't know it. He didn't know he was walking in darkness. But Christ was about to light his path. It was so bright. It was shining. When Jesus stepped in that path, it reminded me of an old song from George Beverly Shea. One sat along the highway begging. His eyes were blind, the light he could not see. He clutched his rags and shivered in the shadows. I love this, then Jesus came. Then Jesus came and he did what? Bid his darkness flee. Then Jesus came. Jesus came. He has an encounter with Christ. The light shines down, knocks him to the ground. Who is it, Lord? He knew who it was. I'm Jesus, the one you're persecuting. Why are you persecuting me? And after that, Saul is assisted by his companions, the scripture tells us, because he's blinded. You know what I thought? I want you to, the Lord gave me this thought, I know. Think about this for a minute. He just had an encounter with Christ. He's on the Damascus Road, and Jesus shows up in a powerful way. And what happens to him? He's blind now. He had an encounter with Christ, and what's, what's happening? Something that isn't so good. Well, wait a minute. Think about that for a minute. We have an encounter. We have the presence of God he calls in our life, he moves in our life, and, and something takes place right after that. Wait, oh. As I was reading that scripture and the Lord presented that to me, well, wait a minute. That's because the story's not over yet. The story's not done. There's a song like that, too. The story isn't over. While Saul was in Damascus, the Lord spoke to this guy named Ananias, and he showed him a vision. And he was a believer, and the Lord instructed him to go pray for Saul. Little problem with that. Ananias had heard about Saul. Saul was pretty notorious in how he treated Christians, followers of Christ. And how he persecuted them. And Ananias pled with the Lord and said, Are you really, is that the, you really asking me to go pray for this guy? Don't you know how he treats Christians? I heard about him. And, and I heard that he's not so good to Christians. And the Lord said to him, Go pray for him. I've chosen him as an instrument. What? Now, Ananias didn't say that, but if it were us, wouldn't be be like, seriously, him? You picked him, of all people, to be your chosen instrument? And we know that he would go on to be one of the greatest preachers of all time. Writing many books in the New Testament. Letters. Ananias was obedient and he goes and prays for Saul. And what takes place? Verse 17. So Ananias went and found Saul. He laid his hands on him and said, Brother Saul. Brother Saul. Hmm. Interesting. And the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road, 
has sent me so that you might regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Instantly, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he regained his sight. Then he got up and was baptized. See, I, I forgot, the, I left out that the Lord had spoke to Saul and said that he was sending somebody there to pray for him. Somebody's going to come and pray for you. He showed him a vision and said, somebody's coming to pray for you. And then he told Ananias, I already told him that you're coming to pray for him. So I set the stage. Don't be afraid. Hmm. Did, I think he said that already. Don't be afraid. He already had prepared the, the ground. He already tilled the soil. Verse 20 tells us, and immediately he began preaching about Jesus in the synagogue, saying, he is indeed the Son of God. And verse 22 tells us that Saul's preaching became more and more powerful, so much so that the Jews could not refute the message of Jesus. What a transformation. What happened? He had an encounter with Christ. It was the encounter with Christ that, as, a symbolism, as the symbolism portrays, opened his blind eyes to see the truth. He didn't know the truth. He was spiritually blind. Interesting how he gets physically blind and then his eyes are reopened. That's a whole other sermon. In the symbolism there, because he was spiritually blind. He was in darkness. He had heard all the preaching about Jesus, but he refused to believe it and continued to believe the ways of the old law. It was the encounter with the light of the world that would dispel the darkness in Saul's life. After Saul's encounter with Christ, it was all became real to him. He would then become the Apostle Paul. And you know, some of us may say, well, I'm not a persecutor of Christians. I, you know, um, I'm not evil like that. I'm not going around in, in uh, persecuting Christians. And I read my Bible, I sing some songs, I go to church, I tithe. Some people may even say, well, all that kind of stuff doesn't happen anymore. Well, I'm here to tell you it does. And Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, still desires to commune with his believers and for them to have an encounter with him to make it all seem real. Here's a powerful story that I read. Um, it was originally written in the free press and it was reposted in the New York Post. And it was written by Olivia Rheingold that it's an article. And it was written, she's a political writer. And I want you to see what she writes. For the last four years at her Christian college, I was so moved by this story. Gracie Turner had been keeping a secret. She had lost her faith. In high school, she watched cancer ravage her great-grandmother. Then she saw her family fall apart. One fight drove her to call the police on a relative. She said this, I just remember thinking, why is this happening? How could this happen? At my first thought, or my first person to blame was God. Turner, a 21-year-old film major, told me, I would lay in bed sometimes and just pray to God like, it would be really nice if it didn't I didn't wake up tomorrow.
you'll figure where this. When she got to Asbury University in Whitmore, Kentucky, she was required to go to chapel three times a week for college credit. But she never believed that God would fix anything since life only seemed to be getting harder between the anxiety, depression, and a recent back injury that brought her to a breaking point. Okay, it gets better. But last Sunday, but something changed. She woke up and spontaneously blurted an idea to her roommate. What if instead of doing homework, we went to chapel today? She had heard a revival had sprung forth a few days earlier there and it hadn't stopped. When she opened the doors, the same chapel that had never spoken to her before suddenly seemed alive. The pews were packed with thousands of people. A thousand people, I'm sorry. Including many of her classmates. Weeping and swaying their, with their eyes closed to nothing but an acoustic guitar in each other's voices. No, what were they doing? Anybody? Worshiping? Suddenly, Grace Turner had no more pain. I don't even know her. Suddenly she had no more, she felt no more pain and she just slumped down and she told the writer it was the first time in a long time where I could finally just rest because I felt like it was the first, or in a long time I could just rest because I felt like I was at peace and I was protected. I felt like it was God telling me this is what you've been missing. And I'm here to tell you today that the Lord is telling us and all who will listen to say to anyone who will listen that this is what many believers are missing. They are missing an encounter with the Lord. They are missing the manifest power and the presence of God to change their lives and to make a difference in their lives. I was so moved by that story, and I don't know why. I do know why, actually. Because it still happens today. When we have an encounter with the Lord, it changes our life. That's how we change. That's how things change in our lives. That was in a secular newspaper, although it leans conservative. There's something missing in people's lives. My second point, and where's the power? Where's the power? What are we missing? Paul was writing to Timothy. You know, I always do that every time I... Talk about that book. In chapter 3, and what does he say? He says, you should know this in the beginning of the chapter, right? And what does he do? He warns. I'm not going to go through the first verses. You can read it, chapter 3. He warns of what people will be like in the last days. People will be. They will be. And you know all of it because all you got to do is look outside and see what the world's doing. And you know what's in that scripture. But he says this. He says that they will act religious, but they will reject the power that could make them godly. Stay away from people like that. The King James Version says, having a form of godliness, godliness, but denying the power thereof. I thought to myself, it's like driving your lawnmower without the PTO engaged and the blades moving. 
You're just driving around, and you think you're going to cut grass, and you never engage the PTO. You know, we had a snow. We had this snow. It's like having your snowblower and just pushing it without engaging the, the auger to blow the snow. Eventually, what happens, you're not going to go anywhere because it's going to get stuck because the snow is going to pile up. Paul is warning Timothy, don't be like those people. Don't hang out with those people. Don't go to their church where they just fulfill their obligation and religious practice and Christ is not even permitted to minister there to those that are in attendance. Don't hang out with those people. And as I thought of this scripture, I, and I, I related it to the story that I just told you, I read to you. In that article, Gracie went to chapel three times a week because she was required to do so for college credit. Like so many others, life challenges and circumstances have people defeated. And we could be going through the motions without God's power in our lives to make a difference. Some just plain don't want to put the time and effort in. Some may say that they're just not into that or I'm not into that kind of stuff. How can you not be into the Lord wanting to change your life and make things better in your life? Well, remember, all things work together for good to those that trust the Lord. And I say this, that remember that good is defined by him, but good is always what's best for us. You know, the lie of the enemy is to so distract us with battles and trials in our lives that we stay focused on them rather than diligently seeking and sincerely seeking the Lord. So we ask ourselves, is our worship sincere? Is our prayer sincere? Is our Bible reading sincere? Are we seeking the Lord in our worship and prayer and in Bible reading? Or are we just engaging in religious acts? And I thought about that and I thought, you ever talk to somebody out of obligation. In other words, you just go talk to this person because you know it's the right thing to do, but you don't really feel like it and you really don't want to talk to them. And how does that conversation go? Yep, sky's blue. Yeah, unless they're one of those. No, it's not. Weather's cold this morning. Yep, the weather's cold. Well, it's cloudy today too. Yep, it's cloudy today. How much really gets accomplished in that conversation? Not much. Just the trivial things being spoken of with nothing really being accomplished. And if we look at that spiritually, just going through the motions, just sing the songs, just say my prayer, just read a few verses in the Bible and not really understand or try to study what they really mean. I did it, I got it done, and now I can move on. I had a conversation with God, but I didn't really accomplish anything by my conversation with him. Think about that for a minute. We spent several weeks on how sincere David was in expressing his heart and his thoughts to the Lord in Psalm. He poured his heart out to the Lord in trial and in joyous times. He expressed himself to the Lord in sincerity. And he did it with such fervor and so, he was just so animated. So what's the big deal? You know, there's uh, <laughs> one of the, uh, he used to be uh, the district assistant superintendent. Pastor Bill Kirk, in a lot of his messages, he always puts, what's the big deal? What's the big deal? So I'll take, a, I'll take a chapter out of his book and say, what's the big deal about all this? Why, why am I even preaching this today?
Because the big deal is this, that the power of God through his spirit is essential to living a life that is according to God's word. Let me say that again. That the power of God through his spirit is essential to living a life that is according to God's word. Without his power, we cannot do it. You can try all you want. I always tell you this. You can wake up tomorrow morning or you can sit in the pew today and you can say, pastor's right. I resolve myself today. I am going to be a better Christian. And you know what happens when you walk out the door. The devil's right there to meet you. I won't use the place that I did last time, but he's at a drive through to mess your order up. He's at the grocery store for the cashier that's having a bad day. He's there to see how you react after you just said, oh, I'm going to be a better Christian today. See, and without that encounter, and if it's not real to you, and we're going to talk about this maybe next week or the week after, I'm not sure. If it's not real to you, you're not hearing the voice that's saying to you. See, the human reaction is one thing, but the reaction that God expects from his people will be another thing. Without his power, it is impossible. And we go back to that story, but last Sunday something changed. She woke up and spontaneously blurted an idea to her roommate. What if instead of doing homework, we went to chapel today? This time, Gracie wasn't going to chapel because it was required. This time she went to open the doors of the chapel and there, would, there was a desire. She was there in seeker mode. You know, I thought of this. I was listening to a preacher this week and Jesus asked the, the, uh, the disciples, he said to them, who do they say that I am? And then he also said to them, who do you say that I am? And they said, you are the Christ. And Jesus said to them, the Father told you to say that. You got that from the Father. You didn't get that from yourself. That was Jesus drawing her that day, putting it in her heart. You need something more. You need something more today. More than just going through it. Just going through the motions. She had heard something. And this time there, there was a sincere desire. She made the move. Let's go to chapel today. Can you hear it maybe? I hear something really spectacular is going on there. Why is that going on? Because there's a people there that want an encounter. That are seeking, diligently, desiring an encounter with the Lord. And guess what? The Lord rewarded her with himself. And this isn't about that move of God. This is about, that was an example. I read that story early in the week. I don't remember what day. And I was like, wow. This is, this is the essence of having an encounter with the Lord. And that's what confused me when I read that. And the Lord said, here you go. I want you to use this. And I'm thinking, I was in a Galatians. That's next week. Now. And I really believe God's saying there's so many missing because you're missing an opportunity 
for the Lord to meet with you face to face and have an encounter with him to change our lives. And again, we may, you know, so, oh, well, Saul, he was, he needed, he needed Jesus bad. He was a bad person. But we don't have to be a bad person to need Jesus bad. We live in a bad world, and we live in a world that is a chaotic world, and we need Jesus bad. And we need him every day in our lives. Where's the power to change our life? They wear the t-shirt. They don the hat. They wear the suit, maybe. They wear the shirt and the tie. And they got this form, and it looks like it, but it's not. Because they deny the power to make a difference in their life. And how do we know when it's a difference? Because we know when that voice says, when you're in the drive through and the flesh rises up, we know it's a difference when we're in a trial or a struggle where something happens in our life and the Lord gives us that peace that passes all understanding that we would not have on our own. Well, I'm just going to get up today and have peace. Good luck with that. Because if you're a Christian, there is no luck, right? The righteous steps are ordered. Think about that for a minute. That's a whole other sermon. Think about that. I was struck when I read that scripture and said, wait a minute. Saul just had this enlightening moment with Christ, and now he's blind. Well, that didn't work out so well. Think about that for a minute. You ever had a great, awesome presence of God in, in your life, and then the next minute something's like, well, this just doesn't fit into the scheme of things. But it did. Then Jesus came. And he was filled with the Spirit. And what happened? He started preaching. The Lord wants an encounter with his people, and he wants his people to have an encounter with him. We can ask ourselves, what are we missing from the Lord? We might not be a persecutor of Christians or an evil person, but we may still be missing out on all the Lord has for us. Are we going through the motions without his power changing our lives? We will never be able to walk according to his word without his power in our lives. The video I wanted to play was the song is yet not I, but through Christ in me is a song. And we've sang it here before. Yet not I, but through Christ in me. How do we walk According to God's word, we have an encounter with the Lord and it's real to us. He's real to us. It's not about coming to church. You've heard people say, just because you walk into a barn doesn't mean you're a cow. Leave that. Just because you come to church doesn't mean you're a Christian and that you're following Christ. It could be somebody standing up here preaching. Just because. It's about a relationship. It's about having an encounter that makes it real. And how is it real when, when something happens in your life? Like, you know, when the Lord speaks through people here and reiterates his message. How do you make that up? You don't, we don't make that up. How is it when you're in a need and the Lord speaks to somebody and they call you, they hand you 
a, what do they call it, a Pentecostal handshake with something in it, a check or money in it, when you had a financial need. When you needed something and God showed up and he either performed it or sent somebody, that's when it's real. Or when God says, trust me and don't fear it. And we can do it because we can have confidence in him. To know that many things about tomorrow we don't seem to understand. But we know who holds tomorrow. And we know who holds our hand. Saul's life was changed by an encounter with Christ. Gracie's life was changed with an encounter with Christ from her sincere desire to seek the Lord that day. To not attend chapel because it was required, but because she had a desire in her heart. I hear something's going on there. The Holy Spirit is there. <laughs> and his power is real. Feel like something could happen. Worship team, I'm fi finishing. You can come up. I think we might need to sing that song. The Holy Spirit is here and his power is real. Anything can happen and it probably will. Something very good, something good is going on around here. There's a light that shines to make the darkness disappear. There's a power at work and there's nothing to fear. Something very good, something good is going on around here. You know there's a power at work when I can do those words without messing them up. <laughs> so you know the Lord is moving. So listen, I'm going to close with this. And look, I am not, I'm not a fad preacher, so please don't, do not um, think I'm doing this to copy or fad. But I want to tell you something about this, in, in, uh, because I'm not one of those people that says that, you know, there's revival somewhere, and they did A, B, and C. And, and A, B, and C is what the Lord calls us to do, to worship, to seek him. So that's really basically anyways. But, any, but a soccer coach who had only spoken, I think they said twice before, said this, he opened the altar. And said, maybe you have not tasted or had perfect love. And he even said, maybe you haven't had perfect love in the church. Maybe you, and I'm paraphrasing, maybe you have never experienced that love from God that is a perfect love that surpasses understanding. And he said this to them. Don't miss the, uh, this opportunity. And I'm going to change it a little bit and add my flair and say, don't miss the opportunity to have an encounter with the Lord and his love. That's all he said. And again, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm preaching this to tell you that the message of Jesus is he wants us to have a relationship and an, an, an encounter with him that makes it real. That he is real to us. He's not a Sunday church. He's not a, that's nice, you know, and uh, uh, he's not about religious acts. The Pharisees were worried about the disciples washing their hands before they ate. 
and Paul spoke about whether they were circumcised or uncircumcised. It's not about religious acts. It's about a relationship and it's about having an encounter. And I'm going to challenge all of us to go a little deeper. Because God wants to make us even stronger than we are. If you ask yourself, what am I missing? The Lord's going to say, I'll show you. Let me show you a thing or two. Let me present to you what I have. I've got this whole bag of gifts. I got power here for this, that, and the other thing. I got understanding and truth for this and for that. I got my Holy Spirit ready to glide you and take you through whatever you're going through. That's what this is all about. Jesus being real in our lives. And giving him the opportunity to make a difference in our life. And he only can do that if we believe that it's real. That he's real. And that he'll do what he says he will do. And I think he's already talked about that today. So we're going to sing this song, at least this song. I want you to just open your heart today. I want you to just open your mind. And I want you to ask yourself. I want you to ask yourself, am I missing out? Well, I know we all are. I'm not going to point fingers because I can say there's things I'm missing out on. I want more of Jesus, more and more and more. I want more of his great love, rich and full and free. But we ask ourselves, and those that are watching here might listen to this today, because I know there's somebody out there that God's speaking to. What am I missing? Lord, make yourself more real to me today. Would you join me today and and open your heart and your mind as we sing this song, and the power of those words, and all that God has been speaking to us in the last several weeks. He's the light that that makes the darkness disappear. He's the power at work, so there's nothing to fear. He's got to be real to us. Would you worship with me?
haven't had an encounter with God in a long time, or maybe you've never had one, to make him real, don't miss this opportunity. You can either come here and just kneel at the altar, or you can ask for prayer, whatever you want, and let the Lord minister to you today at this place. Let him become real to you. Maybe you're in a situation or maybe something has happened in your life and you need God. You need to hear his voice. You need to have him a reestablishment of his realness to you. Don't miss the opportunity to speak and have him speak to you today as we sing this. Holy Spirit is here and his power is real. Anything can happen and it probably will. Something very good, something good is going on around me. There's a light that shines to make a dark disappear. There's a power at work. There's nothing to fear. But there's something very good, something good is going on around me. This is a turn of fire. This is a holy spirit place. 
Hear what the Lord has to say. Worship me. Continue to worship me and praise me. Come before me. I am here. I will never leave you. I will not forsake you. I am the way, the truth, and the life. None comes to the Father except through me. Come to me. Come to me. Lay your burdens down at my feet. I am here. I will not leave you. Worship me. Praise me. Draw closer to me. For I am the Lord thy God. And I am here. And I am with you.
see that your hearts are open, that your hearts are willing, yea, to receive me. This day I say unto you, do not forget, do not forget the words that I have spoken to you, you, my people. If you will come but seek me, and seek me diligently with all of your heart, I shall fill you with the power of my spirit, that you may have prolonged days. And yea, you will know my peace, for I will walk with you. But yea, I say unto you, be diligent, be diligent, yea, be diligent, my people. Come to me, seek me not just in the house, but seek me throughout the days of your life. For you shall know me, you shall encounter me. But continue to seek me, and I shall be with you, yea, all the days until I return. For I, the Lord, I, the Lord, speak, and I say I come soon. Do not grow weary, do not grow fearful. For yea, you know that I am not a God of fear, that I would give out fear unto my people. I am a God of love, and I love my people with an everlasting love. For yea, I have sent my Son to lay down his life for you. Worship him, seek him, and you shall know the delight of walking with the Lord thy God. You're so awesome. You're awesome in every aspect in all your ways. I pray for each and every person here who might watch or listen to this. Lord, I pray that as real as you are in this place today,
today I thank you for all that you have done and the lives that you have touched. I thank you, Lord, for how you have spoken so preciously and with such clarity. I pray, Lord, that we would not be weary and well and that, Lord, we would persevere. For I heard you clearly say the promises to this body are in hand. The promises that you have spoken to this body are in hand. And, Lord, we receive that today. And I pray, Lord, that we would live that in our lives. Lord, I pray that we receive all that you have. That we're not satisfied with yesterday or the day before. But Lord, we look for the new mercies that are new every morning from the faithful God. Now I pray your blessing on each and every person as we go our respective ways, knowing, Lord, that we have been in the presence of Jesus. I pray, Lord, that the communion of your Holy Spirit that is so loving and precious in this moment, I pray that you would continue to minister to us as we go in our respective ways. I pray your blessing upon your people, Lord, that you would keep them that you would make your countenance to shine down upon them. I pray, Lord, that you would give them your peace. That it passes all understanding. Most of all, Lord, we thank you for who you are and all that you have done here in this place today. Be glorified. 